Okay, so welcome everyone. Um, my name is Kate, and I am part of our international recruitment team here at Western University. I'm also joined today by my colleagues, Kemaljeet and Michael. Um, Michael's in the background a little bit. You might not see his face, but he's here to answer any of the questions that you have today. In terms of what we have uh, planned for today, we want to give you a little bit of an overview of what to expect um, from all of the great support services that we have for you during your time here at Western. So let's get started here. First, I want to introduce you to our international recruitment team. So you'll see my face up there as well as my great colleagues. And all of us are here to support you during your time um, with that transition. So all of you or many of you may have applied and received an offer already to Western. And we really wanna make sure that we're here to support you at every step of the way. In terms of the sort support that we provide, we do everything from doing presentations like this to inform you, to one-on-one -on -one meetings, to chats and emails, and basically helping answer any questions that you have to support you with that transition to Western. We go to the next slide, you'll see we have a number of presentations. So you've signed up for this one today, but we also wanna help you become aware of all the presentations that we will still be hosting this spring, as well as some of the presentations we hosted in the past, because we do have lots of recordings that you can go back and watch if some of those presentations that you might've missed are helpful for you. For international students specifically, we recently hosted a session on the value and cost of a Western degree that may be helpful to understand um, before you make your choice to attend Western. We also have several events coming up on study permit sessions. Uh, so if we flip to the next slide, we really want to highlight these two sessions that are ho being hosted in the next two weeks. So I know many of you today might have questions about your study permit, about the new provincial attestation letter or PAL process, and we do want to be able to answer all of those questions. However, I do want to note that this session today is supposed to be focused on our international student services, but the two sessions that we have coming up in the next two weeks are going to be all about that study permit process. We have a session on April 9th for um, students who are studying outside Canada. So if you're currently in high school um, and you're outside of Canada, that's the session for you. And then we do have another session on April 16th for students who are studying either in Ontario or in another province in Canada. And that will be the most relevant information for those students since the process might vary a little bit depending on where you currently reside. So just wanna point those out. You can register on our website at welcome.uwo.ca slash presentations. On the next slide, you'll also see we have something called Unibuddy Chat. So if you just have a quick question about Western or something to do with your offer and preparation to come to Western, Unibuddy Chat is not a live chat, but we do aim to answer all of your questions within 24 hours. So it's a good place to go if you just kind of want to put an informal chat in. Um, you'll see members of our team are part of that. And then in terms of um, other folks on this, there's also a lot of students on Unibuddy. So say you want to talk to a current student in the program that you're interested in going into, you can also connect not only with staff, but you can also connect with students via this platform. If you are looking for an instant chat, on the next slide, you'll see we have Western Chat. So that is um, a place that you can go to talk with recruitment or admissions. So say you have your offer of admission and you have questions about um, any of your conditions or things that you need to do. This is a live chat that's staffed every day. Um, so you'll be able to talk with someone immediately and get those answers that you're looking for. So this is another good place to go if you have those quick, immediate questions. The final one that I wanna mention here is if you wanna book an appointment with us, we do host virtual appointments over Zoom. So you can book with myself or another member of our team. They are 30 minute appointment slots and you can really just ask anything that you are wondering about and have that um, face-to-face or just virtual phone call um, to be able to connect with us. So if you're looking for that bookings form, you can go to um, the website that you see at the bottom there or you can always email us at international at uwo.ca to book an appointment or to ask a quick question. So those are some of the main methods um, to get in touch with us. And we wanna make sure that we're reachable and able to answer all of the great questions that you have. Another support services that we have um, is called Western Launch. 
So I know a lot of students, one of the things that uh, they have lots of questions about is choosing their courses. So typically students select their courses in the month of June, if you're going into first year, and there's hundreds of courses that you can choose from. So making sure that you know what to take and what you need for the um, programs that you're interested in is going to be very important. In terms of um, that support, we do provide one-on-one -on -one virtual appointments through our student experience team and through your academic counseling teams. So they can make sure that, um, you know, they're getting you all those answers that you have on the, the courses that you want to select. No matter what questions you have, we want to make sure that we're here for you to support you, not only now while you make this really big choice of where you want to go to university, um, but also throughout your time at Western. So you may have seen my face or our international recruitment team's face a lot, um, but Soon we will hand it over to our Western International team, who's really there to support you during your time at Western. And during that support, um, you may see a familiar face, Kamaljeet, who I'm going to pass this presentation over to, to tell you all about the wonderful things um, that our Western International team provides in way of support for our students. I also, just before I leave, want to make sure that you're aware that the Q&A feature is open. So if you have questions as you're listening to us speak, uh, please feel free to answer those and we will answer them. Thanks so much. So good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Uh, so talking about the Western International, we have various teams, uh, various units. So uh, you will be working mostly with the kids team while you are overseas. And the, uh, uh, once you do get here in Canada, then you will be most probably working closely with uh, International and Exchange Student Center. We do have another teams as well, like international learning, international internship, international relations. But most of the time, you will be working with our international and exchange student center, which sorry, uh, which provide the year around support related to the immigration uh, advising uh, about the social connections, your personal well being for the career development, community links, and the skill development, and many more. That will be your second home away from your home. And we don't only do immigration advising, but we also wanted to create an inclusive community on campus. So you are not alone in your journey. We are here to support you. So talking about the team that you will be working mostly with is uh, Anna, who is our director, and then Sandra, Heidi, uh, Laura, Fabiana, and myself, we are your international student advisors who uh, uh, mostly do the immigration and the transition support advising. And also we run various programs on campus so that you feel comfortable while you move in Canada. Francesca is one of our orientation program coordinator, so who look after your uh, orientation throughout the year. So where you can find us. So we are in the, one of the beautiful building. That's the International and Graduate Affairs building. That's the one of the building that has the glasses on it. So that, that's, where, that's where we are resided. And we are very uh, close on campus to met another resources such as uh, um, U um, University uh, Council, which is that's where most of your food and services are available. So uh, what we can help with. So you need help. It can be a help related to filing your study permit extensions, or you are unsure, uh, do you need to file your taxes? It can be uh, you were on the road or something happened. You're not sure if it's uh, uh, it's normal in Canada or not, you need to talk with us. So we are here to to help you the, and to understand the new culture customs uh, in Canada. Sometimes you just get overwhelmed and you just need someone to listen to you. It can be about anything like, um, for example, you, you live in a home with your best friend, but some issue happened over the, let's just say, over the cooking the food. But your friend is really good friend, so you don't want to say rude to them or anything like that, but you're really affected with their behavior. So, but you don't want to ruin the friendship, we are happy to listen to you and guide you accordingly how to manage those relationships as well. 
So sometimes it gets very, very lonely when you're away from your family because most of our students are not used to of living away from family and friends. But when they come to Canada, it's all new start for them. And then they... Uh, they struggle with making new friends or the language is different or the culture is different or the study criteria in the classroom is different. So with all those challenges, sometimes our students do feel homesick. But again, you are not alone in this journey. We are here to support you. So if you are feeling homesick, we are happy to hear from you, happy to listen to you. We can provide you different resources that can help to improve your um, health. Uh, immigration questions. So we have a licensed advisors who can uh, advise you on your study permit questions, on your postgrad work permit questions, or how many hours you can work on campus while you are holding your study permit, or if you are moving to um, higher programs, what will how it will affect your study permit, or once you, uh, if you um, want to know how your program can qualify you for the permanent residency in the future, like general questions, you can always come and talk to us. We are available in person and virtual uh, as well. Our drop-ins are, hours are available too. So you can reach out to us uh, through the virtual appointments to discuss one-on-one -on -one questions, or we have drop-ins hours every day from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. in the beautiful building that I showed you. That's where you can visit us. So who can we help? Uh, what kind of advising services we provide or who are our um, uh, customers or clients, I would say, that we are uh, happy to help? Uh, it will be anyone who identified themselves as an international, who is here on the study permit, who is a, who is a Canadian citizen, who have been living abroad, your new permanent residents, refugees, completing a full-time or part-time degree, exchange student, students of the Western English Language Centre, visiting researcher and students, spouses, partners of international students, and faculty and staff. So you can identify like we are a wider support for on-campus people. And then these uh, are the people that we are very happy to help and assist in their journey. So uh, in, including in the international student advising, the major part is our immigration advising, which I mentioned is more about study permits, work permit, a visitor visa, work regulations, and also like if you are here and you have a spouse back home, if you want to make sure how you can invite your spouse here, we can talk about that. If you want to have your mom with you while you're studying here, we can talk about their visitor visa as well. So we can we pro provide all these kind of immigration services. In addition to that, that we do talk about cultural adjustments and personal issues. So there can be many kind of personal issues that can happen on the basis of culture or on the basis of anything. And then back home, what we have the support is more, sometimes students prefer to talk with their best friend, talk with their siblings, sisters or brother, or talk with their parents about their personal issues. However, when they come to Canada, they don't have that support and they don't feel comfortable calling, calling back home and talking with their parents or siblings to tell about their personal issues. So, but then they suffer by themselves. So we don't want you to suffer by yourself. We are here to support. If you need to talk about your personal issues or you need support with a cultural adjustment, we are here and everything is confidential. Our advising services are the confidential. We don't share other than you, uh, any information. We also talk about the financial concerns and academic concerns. So there is some time when... Uh, when students are not able to pay the fees or because of any reason, like for example, they had a huge support from the dad's business and the dad's business is not running well this year in their third or fourth year and then they are unsure what to do. We are here to support, we, we can uh, listen to you what exactly happened and according to situation, we can guide you what are the resources that can be available. Uh, that is mostly for our uh, um, the st student situation which ha have been affected out of their control uh, situations. So academic concerns because sometimes um, when sometimes students are not able to do good in their classes and it can be from any reason 
they may be A grade students back home and over here they are not able to maintain those grades or anything like that. So if you have that, those kind of academic concerns, you're happy to communicate with us. We can share the different resources that are available on campus or if you need to take time off or anything from your studies and how it will affect your immigration status. We do provide referrals to student health services, student case management, or other on-campus resources. So what I'm trying to tell in the conclusion is like we are the hub. We may not have the solution for everything, but we have the knowledge of different resources that can help your situation. And as mentioned earlier, we are available through appointments and drop-ins. And we also do bi-weekly Q&A sessions. That's where you can ask your questions. This is the link that you can copy later, that this is how you can book appointments that is one-on-one -on -one with us, even though while you are overseas. So advising services for the fall 2024, we are uh, available online. You just need to fill out the form to find the availability. For the drop-in support, we have uh, in-person Monday to Friday, 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. You can just drop in. Those are 15 minutes uh, drop-ins for quick questions. We have virtual immigration FAQ as well, which is every uh, Friday from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. That's where you can... Uh, seek the support uh, and we we change it uh, like during the busiest time we have it every Friday but down the road we generally change it uh, to bi-weekly as well however our office people are always available for the drop-in hours we do provide workshops and information sessions that's throughout the period these workshops can be more about your co-op work permit study permit extension postcard work permit or it can be text information session or it can be cybersecurity sessions, like everything that can support a, a smooth journey for our students. Our office hours are Monday to Friday, 8.30 to 4.30 p.m. And the um, that's our phone and extension available. And our email is IESC at uwo.c. So. Talking about the international student orientation, which I highly, highly recommend you to attend uh, if you can, if you if you get your visas on time, because this is the time, this is a social time that where you can make good friends, you can connect with other people on campus, and then. I have seen, I have talked with many students who have said that the, the friendships that, that they made at the orientation is their unforgettable friendships. So I highly recommend you to attend, attend it and also it will give you exposure of the different resources on campus. Other than that, to make a smoother journey, we do have online orientation modules about Canadian Western and academic culture, health insurance and wellness, finding housing in London and many more. So as you, uh, uh, you, I would highly recommend you to go to our IESC uh, new students web, web page and try to do, do all these online orientations. It will just prepare you about Canada before you even land here. But once you land here, then we have early move-in dates with the residents. If any of you or most of you are staying in residence, the dates for the early move-in is not out yet, but it will be the last week of August. So given that our international students fly from so many countries, we do provide the service of early move-in and our domestic students generally move later. Uh, it is all because of to, you, to provide a smooth journey for you for your arrival. Our international student orientation in person will be happening August 26 to throughout the month of the September. So it's not a one day, two day or three day. So we have we have scattered our events throughout the month in order to support our students who may be arriving late, but they are still part of uh, the orientation. We have a welcome center, welcome center, uh, which will be on August 26th to August 30th, September 3rd to September 6th. That's where we try to welcome our new students. Uh, and uh, you can meet with other staff members like who will be supporting you throughout the year. You can meet with the kids. Sometimes kids team members are over there too. So you can meet with the people in person that you were working online in your recruitment process. In addition, we have a different departments from campus. For example, we have IT people there to set up your Wi-Fi. If you are getting confused how to set up the Wi-Fi, we have people from the off-campus housing as well. Like just, just in case you have not secured your support, then they can guide you about how to find off-campus housing. 
and many, many more collaboration that we do on campus so that you get the one-stop shop on your arrival to get the different, uh, to get the knowledge of different resources of campus. Uh, in addition, our the main goal of the, our international student orientation is to community building experience. And that's where you can make the connections. You can learn about Canadian and Western university culture. You can learn about Canadian immigration. You can learn about, uh, like, you will get a chance to do the campus tours. Our campus is really big. So we try to do the, uh, give the campus tours to our students so that you can know the best places, like how many libraries we have on campus and which library have the better uh, infrastructure or which have the better uh, seating place according to your needs that you can utilize throughout your coming years. In addition, we do take participate with our Mustang games as well that will be happening in during the September month as well. So that's where you can enjoy. It can be a hockey game. It can be um, a basketball game. So it depends. Like some uh, everything is not finalized yet, but there will be something for you to enjoy with your new friends in Canada. In addition, we do have the peer guide program. So our peer guide program is upper year and graduate student help you get settled to make friends and learn about London and more. Our applications will open up for the peer guide in a couple of months. That's where you can apply to get a peer guide for you. So it is more like, for example, if you have if you do get a peer guide, then you can reach out to them for your general questions, or they can be your new friend in Canada for a year who can support you with different resources or something. So for example, you are from, let's just say you're from Iran and you really like eating baklava as your dessert. And then you're unsure which place in London have a good dessert that you really like from your home country. This is so if you reach out to uh, you, you may be hesitant to reach out to us about this question, but you can reach out to your peer guide and that's their role to help you to settle down, help you to find the, the resources or stores according to your needs. So you can just ask like, I want to eat this. I'm not sure which, which restaurant has a good one. Can you guide that kind of stuff as well? Or or if you're free on the weekend and you feel like going out for a walk, you can always ask your peer guide like which um, um, park is better to go for a walk or something. Not only just for general questions, if let's just say that you are in your course program and then your midterms are coming and you are unsure uh, to how to make it the time management or something, and then you are not able to focus on your studies, please share it with the peer guide. Because if an, our peer guide are trained, if they feel like you need to talk with us, they will they will refer you to talk with us. Then we can find different resources for you related to your time management, stress management, or also how to prepare your exams. Other than that, we have an English conversation program, uh, which is a weekly informal groups uh, to connect with others and practice English outside of the classroom. No doubt you all are pretty good at English and, and you do get an admission at Western. Uh, and then you will be here pretty soon. However, I have, we have noticed that our students are not comfortable in speaking uh, in in English. And then part of the reason is practice. In our back home countries, we prefer to to talk in our first language. Uh, no doubt we go. We, we may go to English schools and we do uh, English homework and everything, but we don't uh, talk much in the English. That's why because of lack of practice, our English is not so so fluent. So uh, that's why we have this English conversation program to help our students to be fluent in English. And in this uh, English conversation program, it's a very informal. It may not be a, a kind of, it may not be a strict teacher teaching you. It, it will, it will, it, uh, the, it will be our uh, English conversation program facilitators who are senior students like you like you who have started in the years before and now they are in the upper years and then they try to play games they try to watch movie together like doing those activities to to um support you in your improving your english and in, why english is that much important because canadians uh, we you do we use so many so many slangs as well, which is not understandable by the new person who is moving, uh, to Canada. It may be like you may be hearing people talking, oh, you betcha, you gotcha, which is, 
not a normal word for anyone outside of Canada. And then they, they feel like maybe they don't understand it, but those are slangs which are different from country to country. And that's what sort of our purpose of the English conversation program to educate our students about the basic slangs and to, to make them practice the English. Other than that, we have a support for spouses, partners, and families as well. So if you are bring you are coming with with your spouse, and then this is a program that we run for them as well. So part of the reason is when students come there with their spouses, our students do get very busy with their new friends or learning about the university or learning about the studies or many more things. So they do get busy, and then the spouses who are, and our students do have a space like university to make new friends, but when the spouses comes with them, they do get lonely as well because they don't have a space to make new friends and they are not able to relate to most of the students because they are not a student by themselves. So we provide a space where all the spouses can come together. They can find friends from each other. They can guide each other. We also do sometimes do career session for them so that how they can find the job. And uh, our main goal is to connect to the community and provide the rising support there. And we have um, many more social events and trips as well. We have volunteer opportunities throughout the year. And then we have a weekly network email that goes out that tells about the different uh, activities happening throughout the week that you can enjoy with your friends. We do have Global Cafe program. This will the program which goes every Thursday, 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. And we have, are hoping to start again on September 5th. Uh, and that is the uh, Global Cafe which happens in, on, uh, in the atrium of our building. And the main purpose of the goal, uh, the main goal of the Global Cafe is to create inclusive community on campus. It's always busy with there with 80 to 100 students or 120. And we provide different activities for you to play we provide you the board games we have a ping pong table every thursday over there also we celebrate the various cultural themes as well so then you will be able to learn about different cultures from the world it can be italian theme it can be portuguese theme it can be um indian theme it can be uh, celebrating the lunar new year so many themes throughout the year that we do and i have met with many students who who says that they they are so busy in their lives they don't get a chance to meet with their friends but global cafe is a place that that's scheduled in their calendars to go and meet with the friends there other than that, so we do organize another social events, which is like cultural celebration, international week, potluck and dinners. We do organize London and Western supporting events as well. So many things on the way. Other than that, healthcare and wellness is really important. So all international students are automatically enrolled in the university health insurance plan. So your health insurance can be a little different from your home country or sometimes countries don't have it or it is a personal purchase. But in Canada for a for an international student, it's more like a mandatory thing to have a university health insurance plan. So what it helps you is if you like, if you go and visit the doctor, you don't have to pay the doctor to see you. Uh, and then you just only show your UHIP card and then then they they will they will help you okay and then but if by chance your UHIP is expired or something like that because of any reason and if you visit doctor they will charge you $100 per visit so which gets really expenses other than that it's a full time undergrad and grad students are also enrolled in extended health insurance plans as well so when I say extended health insurance plans, so these are more like insurance plans from your student society. Uh, for our undergrad student, it's a university uh, student council um, who, who have your extended health insurance plan. So what's the difference between the UHIP and your extended health insurance plan? UHIP allows you to visit the doctor and it will cover there. And then if your doctor write prescriptions or medicine or anything, then a medicine or 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 uh, anything uh, any tube or anything that to cure your uh, to cure cure your uh, problem then that amount most probably uh, can be covered through your extended health insurance plan so if you have any questions or something you can always reach out to in person and then we are happy to support about it in addition to regular health care your extended health plan also cover your dentist to some extent also your eye care as well 
So something you utilize when you are here. <clears throat> so we do have the free mental health counseling available on campus uh, throughout the year. That's where you can reach out for your counseling support. And then your counseling can help with homesickness and cultural adjustment, stress and anxiety, grief and trauma, improving coping skills, uh, reducing feelings of getting overwhelmed, discovering personal strengths, on and off campus resources or succeeding at the university. So th there are many supports available on campus because we really care about a student mental health when they are um, coming, ab uh, coming from abroad and staying um, and studying from university. Another thing is highly, highly recommended if you can get involved with the Western International or another um, uh, units on campus uh, because the volunteer opportunities do allow you to gain unpaid work experience, which really help you to in your future jobs as well. And then also it make, gives you new connections to make and also you can learn how, uh, how the work environment works in Canada. And then when you, as a volunteer, you can observe it and later on you can implement in your personal life. Uh, throughout the year, we hire many, many volunteers. It can be orientation and welcome team. It can be peer guides. It can be activity coordinators. It can be ECP leaders or photography and video. We do have the, uh, uh, I have the link in the very bottom that has the, uh, about the volunteer. That's where, uh, that's where you can apply in the coming coming uh, years we do uh, we try our international learning team do do uh, try to provide the global experience so with our international students who are here for the four year studies but their programs allows them to to take an exchange or study abroad this is something you can go, uh, but we highly recommend like before you choose your finally to go there, talk with your international student advisor as well to talk about how it will affect your immigrations. And if you need visas for those countries that you're going for, for exchange. Uh, we do have international internships, research opportunities, community engaged learnings as well. And then international week is your global experience on campus. So we organize, we work with many units on campus to organize the International Week that has um, um, so many activities that demonstrate from the, uh, the activities or culture from the different countries. So you can enjoy the all world activities at one place at a Western University. In addition, we do have World's Challenge Challenge happening and also the undergraduate awards. You can learn more about it once, once you are here. So what are your next steps? It may be overwhelming to get all this information. You don't have to learn each and everything. The conclusion is we are here to help you if you're unsure what to do. <coughs> you can just reach out to us and we can guide you with different resources. Please follow us on the social media, that's Western International. You can check your Western email regularly, which is at, the, when I say Western email, that's at uwo.ca. Uh, it has the, there will be a regular information coming on this email address about your arrival, orientation, and signing up for the different programs that I talked, such as Peer Guide, English Conversation Program. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask us. Also, this is, uh, if you want to contact us, our website is iesc.uwo.ca. Um, our email address is iesc at uwo.ca. Our phone number is on the screen. Our links are available on the screen as well uh, about the uh, appointments and also for the new students. And that is our social media. Uh, if you want to connect with us through the social media, highly recommended because that's where we post our most of the engagement post. Thank you so much. Our Q&A is open. So if you have any questions, you can put it there and we are happy to answer. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, Kamaljeet. Uh, as you can all see, we have lots of support services um, to be able to support you during your time to transition into Western and throughout your entire degree. Um, I don't see any questions coming in the Q&A right now, but uh, we will leave it open for a few minutes. So if you do have any questions, feel free to answer, uh, enter those and we'll either 
answer them aloud to the group or um, send you a message if it's a link or something that you need to find. Um, but otherwise, we appreciate you tuning in. Uh, we know university is a big choice as to not only what country you're going to study, what institution you're going to study at, what program you want to choose. Um, so there's a lot of factors that go into that decision. And we want to make sure that you have all the information you need um, on what to expect if you are to choose Western uh, for that degree. All right, I see one question in the chat here um, regarding a student who's studying in the US and is completing a dual credit. Um, so that depends on how many dual credits you are taking. Um, Michael is gonna um, throw a link in the chat there in terms of our transfer requirements. But when you apply, basically you would send in your transcript from high school, as well as your transcript from the university you're doing your dual credit. You may be eligible for transfer credit, but if you're only taking one or two classes, you likely won't be considered a transfer student, but a high school applicant. But we will ask for both transcripts. Any other questions? If you don't have any questions now, but uh, you think of something after the presentation today, you can always send us an email as well. Um, just reminding you that the email to reach our team is international at uwo.ca. All right, we'll give it another 30 seconds here to see if anything comes in. Um, otherwise, I wanna thank you all for attending today. Um, wherever you're tuning in from the world, it may be early in the morning or late at night for you. So we appreciate you joining us. Um, and we hope to see you at Western this fall. Another question coming in, just as I was about to wrap up, we appreciate the questions. Oh, now we've got lots of questions coming in. Okay. Um, so in terms of OSAP applications, um, there's various deadlines. Um, Michael can link the financial aid page there um, in terms of when and how to apply, because um, those deadlines are specific. In terms of the, the timing and the schedule um, for admission to join first year, so um, this depends. So um, if you've already applied for this current fall, you should receive a decision from Western, um, typically at the latest by mid-May. If you're tuning in and you're looking to apply for next year, applications are basically open from September um, until March and um, for the following September. In terms of if you meant joining first year um, as a student, um, that international orientation is usually the last week of August, move-in is the last week of August, uh, and then classes would start that first week of September. You'll get lots of emails from us in terms of those, um, those dates and timings of when to start. Um, but yes, if you're waiting for admission, um, not to worry, you should hear from us soon. Make sure that you've submitted all of your documents and everything that you need to evaluate your application. Um, in terms of factors that may influence the tuition you're charged, um, I'll allow Michael to um, link that page on um, the various exemptions that may change your um, tuition rates. Okay. Just cleaning up the questions here. Thank you so much, all of you, for asking these. Um, the final question is regarding how to send in your English proficiency results. Um, so again, we're going to link the page that um, has the information on how to submit those, but you will need to send them directly from the testing center. Um, and we only are able to receive those results um, electronically from the testing center. Okay. Um, in terms of where you can find courses to be able to um, see, you know, what courses you need to take in first year for a specific program. Um, in general, if any of you are wondering that, um, the Western Academic Calendar is a great place to look to be able to see all of the various courses that might be um, associated with your program of interest. Um, so for the student who asked is interested in biology, I'm just going to link um, the academic calendar page that you can take a look at. However, it is important to note that we do have a service called Western Launch. So in the summer, you'll be invited 
to um, basically make a one-on-one -on -one appointment to help you with that course selection so that you know exactly what you need to take um, for that program. You'll also want to think about, um, you know, the specific majors that you're interested in taking. So while you're admitted to the faculty level to start, such as the Faculty of Social Science or the Faculty of Science, um, the courses that you choose to take will depend on um, the specific program that you're interested in within that um, subject area. Okay, I see some more questions in. Uh, we may answer some of these in the chat just because they're specific, um, but we'll continue to answer all of these um, as they come in. Just entering some of them in the chat now for you. But feel free to keep asking and we'll provide you the information that you need. All right, I see we're wrapping up the last questions here, typing in the answers. So if I haven't answered them aloud, um, you can find the answers um, in the chat box, um, directing you to links and other information. But lots of great questions coming in. Again, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, we'll stick around for another minute to see if there is any more questions that come via the Q&A. Okay, it looks like we've wrapped up. Um, so thank you for tuning in and we hope to see you all soon. Thanks so much and enjoy the rest of your day.